I'm sure you know that you can design something, 3D print it, sell it on eBay, Etsy, Amazon, or wherever, and make some extra money. But if you took a small portion of that and put it away in an investment account, in 10 years, you'll be actually making retirement income without having to print anything. That's what happened to me. And it all started with a mailbox flag. This video is sponsored by PCB Way. Back when I started on YouTube in 2014, this was my first 3D printer. This is a XYZ Printing DaVinci 1.0. And this was the, one of the few sub $500 printers. Came fully assembled, take it out of the box, start using it. But it had closed source firmware and you had to use their filament cartridges and you had to use their slicer. Another limitation was their cartridges only contained ABS. This thing only printed ABS the way it came out of the box. And eventually the community figured out how to hack this thing and open source it. And then we could print any materials we wanted, including PLA. It's actually printed PLA really good. But I loved printing ABS and it taught me a lot. And the reason I liked ABS, which is the same plastic that's in Lego blocks, is I could print things for outside that would last. And I had a project early on, one of my first videos, is I want to replace the mailbox flag on my Rubbermaid mailbox. It had broken and I could not find a replacement anywhere. That video released back in September 2014 and in that video I showed you how I designed and 3D printed my own mailbox flag. Well, if you go way back then I was still using Tinkercad. In fact, I wasn't as good as I am now, but I was able to make a mailbox flag. Now this is a reproduction I made on the Mini here, the A1 Mini, and the plastic I used is an ABS. This is PLA, so it's not nearly as flexible as the original. The snap here is far less flexible than it was on the original ABS design, but this is the shape I came up with. And what I did is I went to the store and saw the shape of the original flag, because all I had left was about this much of the original, because it broke. And I decided to make it more my own shape. Theirs was more triangulated. I wanted mine more square. I took my own dimensions from the hole, how I wanted it to fit, how I wanted it to lay, and it was a friction fit. So I had this little tighter than the original. And it came out perfect, really, because, well, after several iterations, but I put it in the mailbox, and even the mailman who knew I did 3D printing, he noticed it. He says, works really well. Did you 3D print that? I said, yes, I did. And for years, I had a 3D printed mailbox flag. But after the video came out where I showed everybody how I designed it in Tinkercad, how you can 3D print your own designs, I had a few people ask, I don't have a 3D printer. Where can I buy that thing? Because they were looking for a mailbox flag just like I was. You couldn't find these things anywhere. You couldn't buy. They wanted you to buy a replacement mailbox, which back then was like around 60 bucks. And I was like, why? Why do I have to spend that kind of money? So I put a couple of them up on eBay, figuring, you know, it may take a while to sell, but what the heck? Well, within one day, I sold both that I had listed. I only listed two because that's all I had. And then I realized I could print on demand. So if I got an order, I could print and then ship it. So I listed 10 of them. And within two days, I'd sold all 10 of those. And at that point, I realized I had a product that I could actually make money with. And that's when I launched a print farm. I ended up getting a second one of these and was printing constantly. So I laid them out so it would print like four per hour. Back then, it would take a little over an hour to print this. It only took like 28 minutes to print it on the mini right here because this prints so much faster than this did back then. But it was like an hour per flag. And so I had four of them on the bed. So every four hours, I had to clear the bed off with flags and start a new print. And I had my day job, so I'd pop in at lunch, clear it off, start a new print, go back to work. And then when I got home from work, did the same thing, cleared it off, four more, ate dinner, everything else just before I went to bed, cleared it off, ran four new ones. And in the morning, I had four more prints. And so that was really a total of 16 flags that I could do in one day. But of course, you're going to have some that would fail, some that would warp, some that would lift. So I got about 12 to 14 flags per day out of it. So that was like 24 to 28 flags. That was my limit without getting more printers. So two of these lasted for a while, but what I found is the weakness of this printer. These were not designed to be print farm printers. The wiring 
would eventually fail at spots and I had to repair it. There was other things I had to fix. And so I started making videos on how to fix your DaVinci 1.0, and that's what actually made the channel start to grow. And then I got this printer. This is the original Creality CR10, one of the first ones that was shown on YouTube. I think I was the fourth person to have one on YouTube. And it's still got 3D printed parts and some other custom parts because it was an early unit. But man, this thing printed so much better than the printers that we had. And this was a much bigger bed than this thing. This had a glass bed. This had a glass bed. Now, this is a bed slinger, and people would say, well, you can't print ABS on a bed slinger. But because of everything that I learned how to print ABS on here with glue stick and how setting the bed temperature was so important, I was able to print flags on this with very little warpage. So this became part of the print farm. And eventually they came out with a shorter version, which they called the CR10 Mini, and they were like half the price of this thing. So when I'd add another printer, it was a CR10 Mini. And it had a glass bed and the same thing. So my print farm began to grow and I was selling more and more of these flags until eventually the Ender 3 came out. And a lot of these were starting to wear out and I brought in the Ender 3 and I learned how to fix a lot of things on the CR10 and CR10 Mini that went directly to fixing the Ender 3, which needed a lot of work. And that really exploded the channel when I start, started showing people how to fix your CR10, your CR10 Mini, or your Ender 3. So what does all this have to do with retirement income? Well, I realized that because I had to replace parts on these things, I had to repair them, and sometimes I had to replace them, I needed money set aside from the sale of the flags to pay for all that. Plus, there's a few things I wanted to buy with the money, but I thought what I really should do is just put away some profits and let it grow maybe for a bigger purchase down the road that I wanted, or just savings. And so what I actually did is I took $200 a month. And at first, that was a lot of the profit. But after a while, I could afford to do it. So I put $200 a month into an S&P 500 fund. And I kind of forgot about it, like became routine. And they say pay yourself first. Like when you get your paycheck, put your money in your 401k, put your money in your IRA first, and then pay your taxes and everything else, although they take that automatically out. But I did that. I put $200 away, and after a while, I just didn't even think about it. It was like a bill. Put $200 away, and then you can repair this or do whatever you got to do. And 10 years later, this flag still sells. Well, not 3D printed. Eventually, I couldn't keep up with demand, and I went to an injection molded flag design. But going from 3D print to injection molded, I mean, there were some tooling costs I had to put up with, and I had to buy in volume. So I had to make sure that I was selling enough. But this flag had proven itself to be a good seller. I ended up redesigning it based on feedback from people. They had to have a draft angle, and I even changed the, uh, the snap so it flexes more. And when I print it in HDPE, so it's much more flexible, stands up in the heat much better even than ABS, and holds its color. And I got into injection molding, and we thought if this flag worked good, why not make a universal flag? So I actually made a video about the universal flag back in June 2018. So I had a universal flag with a 3D printed base, but a injection molded flag itself, similar to this. So I kind of shared tooling costs. And I worked with my son on this design. And you'd think a universal flag would sell better than just a Rubbermaid flag. But it didn't. This lasted about two years and just never really sold as well. In fact, we reached a point where it really wasn't worth buying anymore because they just weren't selling fast enough. And I tried a few other things. I had racks for holding kayak paddles that really didn't sell. I had other products that I tried, but nothing could beat this mailbox flag. And to this day, we still sell hundreds of and hundreds of these mailbox flags. And so that money that I was putting away, that $200 every month that just became like a bill I had to pay, eventually grew. And in 10 years, it had grown from the $24,000 that I invested, $200 a month for 10 years, it was worth $50,000. So I went to my brother who's into retirement income and making money off your money. He's good with that. He's even got a YouTube channel. I'll link to him in the description below. I said, look, I got the $50,000 I want to invest. Can it make me some retirement income when I finally decide to just retire? And he said, easily. 
So there's different funds he recommended that I put that money into. He could get me on average about an 8% to 9% return on that, and I didn't have to sell a thing. So really, my 3D printed flag, which sold and sold, and I paid some bills and bought some printers and everything else, turned into an income fund. And if that income fund can earn me a minimum of 8%, that works out to a little over $300 a month, like $333 a month. And if you can get higher interest rate, he's got some better recommendations, maybe a little bit more. But the idea is that now I'm injection molding, so my cost of printers and everything is gone. So my cost to produce it is lower. Plus, I have someone else producing this, so I just have to buy them in bulk, and then we, we ship it out, you know, test them all and ship it out. So I'm not even doing all that work and still selling flags. And pretty soon I could stop selling flags if I wanted to and still have income coming in from the money I set aside, and that's the key. So when you're thinking about 3D printing and selling 3D prints, don't just think about how you can make more money by printing more stuff. Also think how maybe you could turn it into an injection molded product that someone else prints and then you sell and make some money on it and then put some away for yourself so eventually all your work can form an income fund and pay you in retirement. Now I know some will be wondering, how do you take a 3D printed design and turn it into an injection molded design? Well, the perfect place to start is PCBWay.com. Now, I use PCBWay for all my circuit boards and circuit board assembly, but they also do CNC machining, 3D printing, sheet metal fabrication, and, of course, injection molding. Now, injection molding does take some time. First of all, you've got to upload a .step or similar file, not a .stl. Once you've uploaded that, you can, you know, check it for accuracy, but then you got to pick certain things like what kind of volume you want to print at, what material you want to use, what color you want to use. And once you've got all that, they will take that information, review your file, and give you a quote. So you've got to wait for that, and you've got to work with them. You may not have everything right, and you've got to adjust it. But it's an easy source to check out, get pricing from them, and typically their pricing is pretty good. So I would recommend you check out PCBWay.com if you want to get into injection molding your design. Now, I don't want to imply that this is easy. Just take your .stl file and send it to an injection molder, and boom, you've got an injection molded design. No, you have to redesign it for draft angles so it comes out of the mold. Snaps like this were redesigned, shrinkage for the different material. So I had to hire someone to do that design work for me because I'm not good enough at Fusion 360 to do it. So that's all added cost, but when I was done... I took a prototype that I 3D printed and tested in the market and made sure that it could sell and turned it into a real injection molded product that now I don't have to manufacture, I don't have to clean my printer off. My printers can now come up with a new design while this one just continues to sell. And even if you don't go to the injection molded route, you still want to keep selling 3D prints, put some away for the future and let your 3D prints pay you in retirement. I want to really thank my Patreon supporters. I love our back and forth communication and your ideas for future content. If you like what I'm doing here, maybe check out some of the videos popping up. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon is one way or a membership at things.com. And if nothing else, click on the logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hellebuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.